with Kenny the Jet Smith and the big Aristotle, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. They are really playing at a high level right now, going 8-1 and one over the last nine games. A chance to see one of the purest scorers in the league tonight. Rudy Gay's in action. He can make it look so easy at times, Kenny. Yeah, he makes it look easy. You know, the one thing about him, he mixes his game up pretty well. You know, he shoots his threes to keep the defenders honest. But he takes it to the rim just as much. But um, consistent scorer. I know Shaq loves him, um, you know, from the start of his career. Yeah, he's always been a guy you can count on. Ernie Kennedy put up points. And what I really like about his game is he can handle the pressure of being the main scoring option. That about does it for now. Tip off, fast approaching. We send it to Kevin Harlan. Then why do for the hometown crowd and we've got it for you live here from Sacramento, California. I'm Kevin Harlan joined by the talented analyst tandem of Greg Anthony and Chris Weber. It to start out all fueled up and ready to go brought to you by Gatorade let's check out who's on the floor so on the floor for Houston Harden and Ariza the athletic wing pair Anderson is out there with Monte Yunus and it's Prigioni in at the one Houston on D from the baseline he clangs that one off the back iron and down it falls. Collison's got the first points on the scoreboard for the Kings. Now what you have to like about Derek Collison is the fact that he gives you a little bit of everything from the point guard position. He can shoot it from deep. He can attack the basket depending on what the defender gives him. He acts as a true facilitator for the rest of the team when he's manning the point guard. On defense, Houston, this game coming on the heels of their win against Toronto. And what got them that win was the remarkable success they had from the floor. I mean, just a tremendous shooting performance all the way around. Oh, man, that was just great play calling. Guys work the ball around for good shots, extremely unselfish all night. Monty Eunice's shot is good. And we've got an injury out on the floor. Very unfortunate, as always, guys. Uh, don't like to see this. Oh, man, you just hate to see something like that. Oh, injuries, trust me. An unfortunate part of the game. You know he's got to be frustrated. Kuvis checked in for DeMarcus Cousins. Callison kicks to Kufus. Gay against Ariza. And Moda Yunus picks up the foul. That's his first foul. And Chris, with Collison, as you said, he is a jack of all trades as a floor general. Well, a lot of it is that Collison knows what he can and can't do and plays within himself. Always plays to the tempo of the game. Offensive rebound. A nice shot by Kufus. Just a grinder. Always doing the dirty work on the offensive glass. And that's one of the things he brings to the table. It's Ariza on the wing. On the units, no luck. Uh, they have to be happy at least with how they set it up. Most of the time, that's a sure make. And so it looks like the Kings will retain position. but to lunge for that pass to make sure it didn't get through. Uh, great resolve there on defense, allowing nothing easy. Tipped away. Anayunas with the steal. Ahead. Kufis grabs the miss. Excellent D to force that miss there. That took real courage to risk being on a poster, being he's one of the best dunkers in the game. 
Havalo kicks to Kufus. Makes it off the glass. Oh, that is just weak defense there. I'm pretty sure that was not the plan to give him those kind of baskets at the hoop. That defense was awful. That was just pathetic. He should not be that wide open right near the bucket. Teamwork at his finest. Love the extra pass. For Sacramento, they've gone 50% from the field, hitting 3 of 6 since the opening tip. And it'll be Sacramento as a... out of bounds. The Kings retain possession. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, I had a chance to catch up with Dave Yeager. He told me this is a fun night trying to slow down a team that's so smart and opportunistic. He said, look, we've scouted them, but this is the first time we've actually seen them this season. So it will be interesting to see if we can disrupt their offense and slow them down just a little bit. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, Dave, thanks. Well, guys, it really makes sense to have their defense poised to deal with the great shooters on the floor tonight. It really does. If they can't keep the damage done by those guys to a minimum, then it's going to be a long night. And if something isn't initially working on defense, don't just stay in that rut. Be willing to think outside the box to find a solution. Kicks it out to Harden. Shot clock at five. Houston gets it back. Ronnie Eunice dishes to Ariza. It's up and it's off the mark. He's 0 for 1. Kings leading now by three to the inside. Here's Tolliver. Misses off the left iron. Rockets have gone 2 of 6 from the field. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. And two shots coming up at the line as it gets fouled on the shot. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. Houston shooting their first shots from the stripe in this game. No good on the free throw. Well, the crowning moment for the Rockets franchise history has to be their back-to-back -back titles in 94-95. Jordan was out of the league, and it was time to shine for Houston. Hakeem Olajuwon led their team to their only two titles in franchise history. Snatched up. Rockets trailed by three. Reza passes to Parigioni. A three from Anderson. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. He can be a weapon if he gets going early from long range. Don't forget about him when he's spotting up like that and knocking him down like that. The offense has to keep getting him to run. And that one, good. Collison's got his second basket. Uh, it's so hard to stay with Collison on the drive. He's so quick to the hoop, thanks mainly to his explosive first step. Anderson kicks to Monte Yunus. The kick out to Anderson. And that misses. That would have put him up. Kings have gotten five of ten shots to drop in this game so far. Right at the 50% mark. Gay can't get it to go. Houston's gone two of four from beyond the arc to start the game. It's Harden with the drive. And stolen by Kufus. Navalo kicks to Tolliver. He dishes it to Collison. Passes to Kufus. Poke loose. Pass to Gay. And then Gay with the jam. Ouch. Unbelievable <laughs> jam from a player who's given us more than his share of greatness in his time. You're right, Greg. Defense was nothing but an afterthought on that drive to the hoop. Uh, yeah, he sees how soft they're playing him, but he has an aggressive mindset. Goes right into attack mode toward the rack. Oh, that was a great angle we just saw, courtesy of Kia. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. A follow. That's good. Their interior has been inferior defensively. It has got to tighten up. It's trailed by three. Harden kicks to Anderson. It's Ariza on the wing. And Rudy Gay picks up a foul. That is his first foul of the game. Anderson dishes to Ariza. Harden the pass to Monte Yunus. Kicks it out to Harden. That three off the mark. Kings leading now by three. Gay outside. But three. 
The rebound by Anderson. A uh, cold start to this game for him. A lot of his shots have been off. Ariza, right side, to the middle, picked off in midair. Here is Tolliver, still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Nobody near Gay. Another miss by Gay. And the stroke definitely lacking confidence this quarter. Nothing on target. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. The Rockets shooting their third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And the first one at the line is good. Chris, you were one of the best passing bigs to ever play in the NBA. When you look around the league now, who do you feel is the best passer in the post? Oh, I mean, when you look at if you if you you know look at Blake Griffin, I mean, just such a great uh, a passer. I mean, look at the Casal brothers; they're just you know incredible at seeing over the defense. And if you want to include Draymond Green as a big fella, uh, you know he's definitely one of the best passing big men out there. So I love seeing the tradition continue uh, with big fellas that can pass the rock. Well said. Costa Cooper's is such a valuable player to have off the bench for a team, Chris. Gives you spacing and size and really knows how to play within himself. Well, Kev Cooper's is usually productive in whatever role he is playing for a team. His versatility to start or to be the first big off the bench is really what makes him valuable. Kings leading now by four. Here's Temple. And a miss there on the triple. He should not be attempting three-point shot. I'm not sure why he tried that there, but that's not his game. And Anderson kicks to Harden. It's Ariza on the wing. Houston moving it around. Anderson right side. Harden outside. Four on the clock. Here's Bonnie Yunus. And stolen by Kufus. Outside Collison. And Temple now atop the key. And there's a whistle that's going to go on James Harden. That is his first foul of the game. Barnes, he's checked in for the Kings. Houston also making some changes. Harrell, he's checked in for Monte Yunus. Sam Decker comes in for Ryan Anderson. And it's Brewer in for Trevor Ariza. There's a screen. Collison gets a wide-open look. He can't get it to go. And it's Houston the other way. And guys, this is the first they're seeing of Sacramento. And looking back to last season, they won this season series as you'd expect. Yeah, they were the better team one year ago, but a lot can change from a season ago to the next. They have to make sure not to take anything for granted. Hard <laughs> That's how you attack. Wow. Attack the real baby. <laughs> <laughs> Move out the way. The Kings leading. Here's Collison. Rebound by Harrell. Now that's what we call good defense in the paint. Worth its weight in gold. Well, that's just a stupendous effort by him right there. He stopped him dead in his tracks. Outside Collison. Feeds it to Tolliver. Here's Temple. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Brewer with the ball. Guarded now by Barnes. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. Oh, wow. And Brewer just has such a steady hand. Even when he gets hit, he nails the shot easily. Sacramento making a switch here. Lawson's checked in. And a switch here also for Houston. Daniels is checked in for James Harden. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. Harden can carry an offense alone with this scoring. That's no secret. A big part of why he's able to do that is because he's so gifted at getting to the line. The past couple of years, he's averaged more than 10 free throw attempts a game. They set the screen. Tolliver kicks to loss. Knocks down the three ball. Lawson's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. There's a chance he could go for a big game if they don't D him up on the perimeter. And however you feel about Harden getting to the line, whether you think he deserves it or oversells calls, you can't deny, Chris, that he is effective doing it. Well, 
Some may say it's a lot easier to shoulder an offensive load at the free throw line, but they may never have taken the physical beating that it takes to get to that line. You got to give Harden credit. He knows how to create contact and push the issue. Very crafty when he goes up for a shot. If he feels a defender is caught with his hand in the cookie jar, in other words, reaching in for the ball. Count that one. And just dropping the ball down inside a timely assist. Sacramento's gone a meager 1 of 6 from three point land since we got started tonight. They get the rebound. Yep, that one goes. Kufus has got 12. Oh, man, off to a terrific start. Yet to miss with six made buckets. Here's McDaniels. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And to look now at the four areas where shots can come from. The paint, mid-range, and shots from deep all broken down for the Rockets. And you can see how important those inside baskets are. This is a team that loves to work the ball inside, whether the entry pass or off of a drive. They like to feed on those high-percentage looks. The free throw drops from McDaniel. Well, Chris, we're seeing around the NBA from the Warriors to the Spurs to so many, the value of great passing from all five positions, but especially the big one, especially the front court. In your opinion, what advantages does a big man have as a playmate? Uh, well, the big man has uh, many advantages. One, if he's a beast on the post like he should be, Kevin, he should be drawing <laughs> double teams. And what does that allow? That means that there are three on four on the rest of the play. Three defensive players against four offensive players. And if he swings that ball quickly, just let the mathematics alone do the trick and you move that ball and you'll have an advantage. What else does it do? Sometimes the player is taller and he can see over the defense and maybe attack from angles that shorter players can't do. And, and third, what does it do? Big guys on defense are not used to playing outside of the free throw line defensively. And so therefore your defender may not be as strong and therefore uh, get his hands on deflections and things that you may see happening from guard. So uh, yeah, you, you're right. Uh, the big fellas that have always been uh, some of the best players in the post have been some of the best passers. And uh, right now you're seeing that in order to be in the game, uh, you're going to have to make your teammates better and not just be uh, an endless hole in there when they throw the ball to you. Yeah, great perspective. Rockets trail by six. Over in the corner, Decker to the middle. Here's Harrell. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. Now look, it was plagued the Kings last year and the season before. It was their inability to get stops on defense. They allowed the most points per game in 2016. At times, they showed no interest in defending the rim or getting a hand up. He's off on the second. And with the Kings and their defensive struggles, Chris, a lot of it comes from their inability to defend the three-pointer. Well, they better have a different approach this season in that area of defense, that's for sure. When the effort is there, the Kings can be tough on D. It's a matter of committing to a scheme and following through. They have the talent. Decker dishes to Brewer. Over in the corner, Decker has to Ennis. Houston moving the ball around. Here's Harold, and Harold slams it in. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered us, some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Well, also a miscommunication on defense. No one rotates over. See ya. Here's Temple. And what was that about? Not a good shot right there. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. And Decker slams it in. Great instincts on this. It's times that play perfect. Here's Temple looking for his first basket still in this one. Kicks to Barnes. Shoots a three. Rebound by Harrell. Rockets trail by three. There's the dish to Decker. The feed to Harrell. Now here's Brewer. Covered by Barnes. And stolen by Kufus. And outside. With one on the clock, and the shot goes in. Austin's got his third basket of the night. And so the first quarter is in the books. Kings lead by five. The second quarter coming up right after this break, so don't go anywhere. Now 
of the second quarter just getting set to start. And when you consider how the Kings are doing, guys, what are your thoughts? You can tell the point of emphasis has been to get to the offensive glass. Yeah, whether it's blocking out in the paint or knifing in from the perimeter, they're focused on creating second-chance opportunities. Rockets trail by five. We've got Lawson. Rudy Gay is out there with Barnes. Then there's Kufus, and it's Temple in a two-guard. That's the five to begin the second quarter for the Kings. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. And the foul called on the Sacramento Kings. The Rockets have gone five of nine at the line. And with more and more big men looking to shoot from outside, Chris, a lot of pick and rolls are turning into pick and pops. In your experience, which was harder to defend? Uh, it depends on the player. Uh, I mean, uh, if a guy can pick and pop but he can't dribble, it's easy to stop him because uh, you run him uh, off his spot. Uh, if a guy uh, likes to drive, uh, it's, it's easy because, hey, you let him have that jump shot. But if a guy can pass and dribble, then, then you're in a tough position because, one, he can catch quick and shoot and knock it down. And secondly, I used to like catching it, pump faking, and attacking the basket right away. And third, after I dunk on your head, I'm going to attack, <laughs> pump fake, and drive and kick it out because help has to come over to help you because the pick and pop has put you in a terrible position. So yes. I love the pick and pop, but it only depends. It all depends on the offensive player's skill set to determine how you play each certain individual. Great way to put it. Here's Anderson, and Anderson slams it in. Oh, just solid on the one-handed slam. And guys, when it's a tight ball game like this, he's the guy they want with the ball. Gay passes to Temple. Puts up a three. Rebound by Harrell. Harrell's got three rebounds so far in the game. In the corner, it's Brewer. And so it looks like the Rockets will retain possession here. Here now, the league's highest scoring teams the past 10 games. What a stretch it has been for these guys. Fifth best, the Rockets. Yeah, what an impressive run for this club. Everybody seems to be in a rhythm in terms of scoring, and they are putting up some big numbers. Just about a minute and a half has gone by here in the second. Ennis kicks to Brewer. It's good, the assist that time from Ennis. Brewer's got five. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. The pass to Temple. Dishes to Gay. Sinks that one from the post. And the Kings lead by three. And Gay is surprisingly finessing the paint. A real offensive juggernaut. Here's Harold. It's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Rufus. And so he's picked up his final foul. And he will sit for the rest of this game. Some changes for Sacramento. Anthony Tolliver. He's checked in for Kupas. Flalo comes in for Garrett Temple. And it's Collison in for Ty Lawson. And he knocks down the first one. And getting to the line and hitting your free throws, a, a good way to get back into the game. It stops the clock and extends the game and allows you the opportunity to set your defense. They've been perfect in the line so far here in the second quarter. Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Trevor Ariza's checked in for Sam Decker. James Harden comes in for Corey Brewer. And it's Pablo Prigioni in for Ennis. Stolen by Collison. And now a Flalo pushing it up. No one back to stop him. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, guys, we've seen DeMarcus Cousins become one of the elite big men in the NBA, dominant in the post, and even adding the three-pointer to his game. But at times, his temper has overshadowed his talent. Cousins says he's now turned a corner, saying, my mind has grown. I understand the league better. I understand the politics of it. Now I'm becoming the professional I need to be. It took time. Guys, he understands he now has to lead example. He wants to win, David. You know that. Thank you. And the Rockets making a change here. Monte Yunus has checked in. Here's Gay. That one off the back iron and out. Well, uh, you know, they're in the lead, but he's still been frustrated from an offensive standpoint. 
One item with Rudy Gay, Chris, is that he is very aware how to take advantage of a mismatch. And that awareness, Kev, is something that has made Gay such a reliable scorer. A lot of players have one way that they prefer to get buckets, but Gay is comfortable doing whatever it takes. He's gotten better over his career in taking what the defense gives him. Knocked away, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Ariza. And now a look at James Harden. How last month turned out for him, averaging 13 points per game, four assists, and three rebounds. Just solid all-around performances we've been seeing from him, delivering night in and night out. Here's Tolliver. The shot comes out, and Houston the other way now. This game is finished. They'll be off to Portland taking on the Trailblazers. That will be their second of this five-game road trip. Bonnie Innes kicks to Harden. And he misses the go-ahead basket. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can count on him to continue missing. And that one's good by Gay. Oh, and if you were the defense, you have to be right in the jersey of Gay. A knockdown threat on the catch and shoot. Pass to Monte Yunus. Gioni for three. It's held in by Collison. Shot. He bricked out. That shot usually is money for him. Went to go with a three. Another miss by Gay. As he continues to rack up the misses from three-point range, he still appears undeterred. He, he's going to keep firing from out there. Here's Harden on the wing. He's covered by Collison. Harden kicks to Prigioni. And Modi Yunus picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. For the Sacramento Kings, their last game a loss to Oklahoma City. And that's one of those games where I just felt the attitude going in was wrong. I think they believed what was being said about them in the press, and that was a game that they just couldn't win. Well, also, when you're a monster underdog, you have to play like a monster. You have to be aggressive, really physical. I didn't think they brought that level of intensity. Rockets trail by three. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Gioni dishes to Hart. Anderson passes to Monte Yunus. The kick out to Anderson. And it's all evened up. Anderson's got eight points. He's not the most prolific shooter from downtown, but someone on defense still has to check him. Inside, Tolliver. The shot's good. Collison making the play. Collison's got three assists now in this one. Oh, I love to see the selfishness from Collison. Really whips the ball over to the open man quickly. Ariza kicks to Monte Yunus. And some nice passing there by Houston. Comes up empty down low. And that's the way you want to defend. Nice job there. That, that's what I'm talking about. That's just picture-perfect defense there. Really stifled this man and gave him no chance at a clean look. Astro Flalo. He feeds it to Barnes. Shot clock at six. Off the screen. And there's the nice layup by Gabe. Now it's a four-point Sacramento lead. Oh, he's nailing a lot of his attempts right now. This might end up being a big game. Basket, good. Ronnie Yunus has got four points now in the quarter. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. It's tipped and stolen by Ariza. Ronnie Yunus in the post, covered by Barnes. The offensive rebound. And right on through for another out, basket. He's got five made on five of nine Sorry. shooting. Oh, he's been basically perfect so far in this quarter, especially on offense. Timeout is called. First of the game for Sacramento. And Ariza isn't a guy you build a team around, Chris, but he is a solid starter in the NBA. And he's a guy that's supposed to get more credit for his tenacity on the defensive end. His frame and defensive fundamentals allow for a lot of flexibility from his coach. He still has fast hands and is always up there in steals when the season comes to a close. Collison dishes to Gay. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. That one is on a reason. And when it comes to athletic small forwards, Gay is the cream of the crop. An aggressive player whose reach really helps him on both offense and defense. 
And one thing with Rudy Gay is that you know what he's going to give you each game. One of the more reliable scores in this league. KJ McDaniels, he's checked in for Houston. Harden kicks to McDaniels. Back to Harden. And it's Ariza in the corner. Eyes a three. That one dropped for his second bucket. Mark him two for four. And Chris for Rudy Gay, he's reliable. Game to game is a score. And you sure can't overstate how important that is to a team. You always want to have someone that can get buckets every night. Rudy Gay has been that guy his whole life. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And a comparison here as we get a look at the last five games of steals and fouls as well as the current season number. So those stats for him. For Sacramento, they have been perfect at the line so far, albeit just two for two. No good on that one. And a problem that this Rocket team Chris has had to deal with the last few seasons is quitting on themselves during games. I mean, that's something you have to bring to the table as a player yourself. That's something that is very hard to coach out of a team or prevent because it's all on the mentality of the players. Just mental lapses in general have been a big problem for the Rockets over the last couple of seasons. And it's a shame because they have been so deadly when they all have their heads in the game from start to finish. A chance here to get a quick injury report. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge for an update on DeMarcus Cousins. David? Hey, guys. The head athletic trainer of the Kings was able to update me on the situation. It's not what anyone wanted to hear, as it sounds like it's a severe injury. Boy, losing a player like him right now, just a huge blow. They depend on this guy so much, Kevin. Thank you, David. Really appreciate you finding out how he's doing. And, you know, I know everyone is rooting for him to make a quick and full recovery. You're right. We know he's a baller, a competitor. And he'll do everything within his power to return to the court as soon as possible. And stolen by Barnes. Gay passes to Barnes. Collison dishes to Tolliver. And he comes up with the deuce. Tolliver's got eight points. Beautiful lead pass. The finisher never has to break stride. Feeds to Harden. He kicks it to Monte Yunus. Back to Harden. Here's Brigioni. He's covered by Collison. And the call will go against Anthony Tolliver. That is his first foul of the game. Sacramento making some changes. Temple comes in for Aaron Aflalo. And it's Lawson in for Darren Collison. Deckers checked in for the Rockets. Tyler Ennis comes in for Pablo Brigioni. Ennis takes to Decker. Just five on the clock. To the paint. Puts it up. And Monte Yunus, the basket on the assist by Ariza. Ariza's got three assists in the game. The Kings trail by three. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions right now. They need the basket. Here's Temple. Can't tie it up as that one misses. Houston's gone two for five from three-point land since the end of the first. In the corner, Moni Yunus with it. And some nice passing there by Houston. And the Rockets getting another bucket right there. And he's had an excellent performance overall from the field. Kings have gone 7 of 15 from the field here in the second quarter. Just under 50% shooting. Pass to Temple. There's the three. Doesn't go for him. And Houston the other way now. Uh, he, he has been just terrible this game. A real negative for his team. Here's McDaniels. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. Barnes outside. Sacramento again missing. Rockets leading by five. It's stolen. Here's Temple, and so he draws the foul on the shot, a trip to the line to shoot two. And working, Kevin, themselves to the line here in the second. A nice way to get your offense going. Now, one of the issues the Kings have had over the last decade or so is that they haven't had much consistency at the coaching spot. That turnover is a recipe for chaos for a team. 
Looking at who's out there now for the Rockets. Harrell comes in for Monty Unis, and it's Brewer in for Trevor Ariza. Here's a whistle. It's going to go on Corey Brewer. That's his first foul. And really just a great play to sacrifice his body and take the charge. The Kings trail by three. And with the Kings, you understand the desire to go out and get the best coach for a team or to change things up. Uh -huh. That's a big thing that nobody seems to understand with the Kings. In order to improve, you need to have some consistency year to year and make a commitment. You just can't blame it on the players if they don't have consistent leadership. Hopefully they can have a coach last longer than three seasons in the next decade for the sake of the players and the fans. Uh, you are shocked when he misses open shots like that. The D should be thanking their lucky stars right now. Ennis passes to Harrell. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. Playing as a team so crucial. Let's see the NBA's best. The Rockets number one. The beauty of watching this team is seeing the ball move around the court. It doesn't stick. That's why they're at the top of that list. That free throw good from Decker. Look at this Rockets team. As impressive as they are on the offensive end, they do have their weak spots. One big one is rebounding and closing out possessions. They just give up way too many second chance looks. And the rebounding problems of the Rockets, Chris, makes a lot of sense with their lineups. They often will go small at the forward positions for stretches of time. Well, that's their weakness, and that's the part where they can fall behind with rebounding. A lot of it is that they get out of position too often. Rebounding is one reason why they can falter defensively for long stretches of time. Brewer is just to McDaniels. 104 left in the first half. Six to shoot. Kept alive. Decker. And he drops in the way up off the glass. Decker's got eight points. And the deficit would be bigger if they hadn't been doing such a great job crashing the offensive glass this quarter. Barnes kicks to Gay. He dishes it to Lawson. Brewer with the rebound. He's been able to connect here in the second half after hitting one of the first. Ennis passes to Harrell. And they have yet to miss a shot from the line here this quarter. He's gone three for four from the line. And of course, we'd all like to see his percentage at the line improve, but he just does not have the touch right now. He's in the 60s. That free throw, no good. Wow, what, did he have something in his eye on that shot? <laughs> He hits the second from the line. There's 31 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Here's Lawson. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. Wow. He doesn't make plays like that very often. That's a nice move inside. Ennis dishes to Decker. Off target from three-point range. And Temple kicks to Gay. Point range, and we've reached halftime in this one. Rockets on top, leading by six. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Here with Coach Dave Yeager. Coach, what is going to be the focus offensively going into the second half? Well, we try to go inside. You know, that's our strength, anyways. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. First half in the books, Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, welcome back. Houston found themselves in a close game in the first. During one stretch, they trailed by seven, never falling behind too far. They completely dominated the second quarter, turning a small deficit at the beginning of the period into a six-point lead at the half. Kenny, what do you think about the Rockets? The differential is the free throw attempts, and that's one of the big stories in this game tonight. They were being so aggressive and so smart that all they could do on the defensive end was foul. Shaq, what's your take on Sacramento? They kind of get more aggressive on the glass. Over the first half, we saw them being schooled down low. You know what I'm gonna say, Ernie, barbecue chicken. If I was coach in the locker room right now, they'd be getting an earful. Extra rebounding, effort will pay off in other ways. The energy is really where it starts. Something like that, Ernie. 
And that's it for halftime as the second half is just about to get underway. See you after the game. A nighttime glimpse of the Tower Bridge, one of the landmarks here in Sacramento. Welcome back, everyone, to the capital of California. And it's been a back-and-forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. You look at Monte Yunus today, he's been every place. Yeah, how about that first half? He's already scored more points than he averages on the season. Yes, yeah, somewhat surprisingly, he's been looking for his own shot, but the defense has been daring him to do it, so we might as well let it fly. So on the four for Houston, Harden and Ariza, of the athletic wing pair. Monte Yunus out there with Ryan Anderson, and it's Brigioni in at the point. Where's the box out? Some easy second chance opportunities there. That's just a real lack of physicality in the post there. No reason at all that they should have gotten the rebound off that miss. Harden outside to the left side wing. Stolen by Collison. And now the Kings fast break. On up the court. The lead pass was put in just the right spot. Collison's got six points. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Anderson passes to Monte Yunus. And the jam by Monte Yunus. And some hang time on the rim. Puts a little cherry on the top of that slam. Well, those kind of displays of strength can get one team rolling. Collison kicks to Tolliver. That falls. Great assist by Darren Collison. Collison's got six assists here tonight. The dish to Ariza. Harden the pass to Ariza. Back to Harden. For the three. Hits it from three-point range. Five points in the game. Oh, and really, Harden is no stranger to his shots being contested by aggressive defenders. I mean, he just nails these shots thanks to how he stays concentrated on the cup. Here's game. That one good for two. Now, this is exactly the start they wanted to just have. They've only missed one shot in five or two. Rockets leading by three. Harden dishes to Prigioni. against Harden. Excellent D there from a follow. For Sacramento, they've gotten four of their first five second half shots to fall. 80% since the break. Gate kicks to a follow. For the tie, the Rockets pull it in. Ronnie Yunus has got rebound number seven for him tonight. Harden the pass to Anderson and finished off by Anderson. Oh, Harden is so good at finding the open man and the selfish superstar who really whips the ball over quickly. Collison dishes to Gay. And the rejection by Harden. And so it looks like the Kings will retain possession here. LaBissier has checked in for Matt Barnes. Well, we're into the third quarter, just over two and a half minutes play. Kicks to LeBissier. Now the feed to Collison. Just four to shoot. Another miss by Gay. Just not much success when it comes to shooting. Harden outside. Houston moving the ball around. Ani Yunus's shot is good. No, well, you just got to keep feeding him the ball. Everything he shoots has been gold so far. The Kings trail by seven. Kings head coach David Yeager did not spend much time unemployed after parting ways with the Grizzlies. I think he was hoping for a new setting with more support from the front office. There been some friction there. Man. And once again off the mark by Sacramento. They've shared the load offensively. And guys, they put the defense on their heels. You can see right now they're trying to react. And that's what you want when you're in a rhythm offensively. And the shot is good. And it's a nine-point rocket lead. And you mentioned Yeager looking for a more supportive front office, Chris. Doesn't that make the Kings kind of a surprising choice? Ah, excellent point, my friend. They've gone through about a coach a year for the last decade. he got a pretty big pay raise, though, and a multi-year commitment. The Kings are lucky to have them. We hope they show some patience. Over to the left wing. Harden against the Flalo. And the pass to Monte Yunus. Fires from deep. It's hauled in by Tolliver. Tolliver's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. 
Harden against the follow. Harden gets to a reason. Looking for Modi Unis, he gets it there. And count the basket, he was fouled, and he's going to the line for one more. How about that assist? Accurate toss inside for the high percentage look. Garrett Temple has checked in for Sacramento. And that one misses. Kev, whenever I see Trevor Rees out there, I can't help but think of how he came into the spotlight. He went from being a role player early to becoming a major part of teams after his stint with the Lakers. He said he learned a lot from playing with Kobe. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Got it in the Houston leagues. They cut to just nine on the basket from Gay. And with the reason, part of his progression was natural. But he knows that he made a huge jump after he played with Kobe in L.A. <laughs> well, I thought his quote about playing against Kobe was great. I mean, he said, the first time I played against Kobe, he scored 40 on me. The last time I guarded him, he scored 35. So I guess I got a little bit better. You know what? Great sense of humor. Just glad to see it. And Temple kicks to Gay. They set the pick. Shoots off the screen. No good off the back of the rim. But that would have been lucky had it fallen. Poor shot selection. Well, that's just not wise to take that shot in that situation. He'll think better of it next time around. Harden the pass to Yunus. Can't cash in from close range. The Kings trail by 11. Gay dishes to Collison. Rockets with the rebound. Yunus has got eight rebounds in this game. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Here's Anderson. Sacramento grabs the miss. So it's off to Brooklyn after this game as they have the next to look forward to. That will kick off a six-game road trip for the team. Collison kicks to Tolliver. Leans. That ball's great assist by Darren Collison. Collison's got assist number seven for him tonight. It's Ariza on the wing. Here's Prigioni. Here's Yunus, And the layup's good off the glass. Yunus has got the lead up to 11 now for Houston. Almost uncontested. I mean, it's nice to be able to add to the lead without having to really work for it. Man, it looks like the defense is just giving up. Looking to end his cold spell. The rebound by Anderson. Anderson's got six rebounds here tonight. Dishes it to Monte Yunus. Passes it to Anderson. Puts the move on, and the layup is good. Anderson's got four points in the quarter. Yeah, sloppy D there. You can't let him get the ball in his hands down there. That's just a total breakdown on defense. Man, there's no reason why he should be allowed to catch the ball that close to the basket. Tolliver, no luck. Rockets leading by 13. Ariza outside. And Anderson kicks to Harden. And Harden with the stuff. Oh, and when Harden is going strong to the rim, he's looking for the throwdown, ripping the rim down hard on that one. Tolliver with the bucket. Just a positive force right now for these guys. And though his team has fallen a bit short, it's not because of him. Now, that's a great timeout called by the coach there to try to calm his team down. They're turning the ball over way too much. Sacramento making a switch here. Lawson's checked in. Houston's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. And Brewer kicks to Hero. Stripped away. Here's Temple. It gets rebounded by Ennis. My goodness, how about that miss? I mean, that's two easy points that they've just given away. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Gay passes to a flower. Got it from 16 feet. aflalo has got six points. Rockets leading by 11. Here's McDaniels to the wing on the left. Ennis kicks to Harrell. Over in the corner, Decker drills the three-pointer. 
11 points in the game. Really in a good position thanks to the accuracy from beyond. Sacramento's gotten off to a very slow start from three-point range in the second half. They're 0 for 4. Lawson kicks to Gay. Goes up on the wing. Basket good. And Gay is very confident from the mid-range. When he has his feet under him, he's extremely reliable from there. Houston's gone 2 of 3 when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. McDaniels dishes to Brewer. Harrell the pass to McDaniels. Second chance shot. And Harrell with the lay-in. Good. And the Rockets lead by 14. The passion, the skill, taking full advantage on the offensive boards. Lawson kicks to Gay. Offensive rebound. A second chance effort. No good that time. That's the shot you see him make all the time in warm -ups. He just messed up the release there. Houston moving the ball around. Brewer wishes to Harrell. They swipe it. And now, in transition, it's a follow. Here we go. That shot, no good. Houston leading by 14. Something that can bite this Kings roster at times, Chris, is their carelessness with the ball. Well, turnovers are a big problem for a lot of teams that have the youth that the Kings have. It's something that they should decrease the more this roster gets used to playing with each other. At least their turnovers come from players trying to do too much and share the ball instead of just not having their heads in the game. And he's able to get it back. Sacramento again missing. The defense got super lucky there because he does not miss many of those. For three, rebounded by Temple. King shooting 35% or so in the third quarter. Whatever they're trying is not working. And here's a follow for three. It's rebounded by Houston. Brewer's got his third rebound tonight. No doubt the fight's there. They are trying to battle back, but he's just really struggling this quarter. And not quite as aggressive from outside as they were in the first half. Sticking to the high percentage shots, playing smart with the lead. Turn around Jay, and he didn't get quite enough under that one. But these are just terrible shots he's attempted right now. No reason whatsoever for this kind of horseplay. McDaniels passes to Brewer. Feeds it to Harrell. Ennis kicks to Harrell. And Harrell slams it in. On the shorter side, as a power forward, his hops are the great equalizer. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Down low. Their offense, stone cold. Another miss there. Inside. Ball's knocked loose. Gay with the block. And Gay has put a ton of work into his defense over the years, specifically it's how he times blocking those shots. That's just an outstanding job by the D there to get in his way without fouling and changing the direction of that shot. Ryan Anderson, who's checked in for KJ McDaniels. The Kings trail by 18. There's 53 seconds left in the third. Lawson kicks to Gay. That three off the mark. Houston's gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. And it's out of bounds to the Rockets as Houston retains possession. Puts it up off the inbound. Harold dishes to Decker. Ennis passes to Harold. He feeds it to Brewer. Anderson kicks to Harrell. To the inside. Five on the clock. Houston needs to get a shot off. And here's Anderson from the arc. It's good. The assist that time for Ennis. Ennis has got three assists tonight. Game with it. He's got 16. Here's the screen. Lawson from outside. No good there. And as we conclude the third quarter, pretty much a blowout. It's been a one-sided affair. Houston on top, running away with it. And time for the short break and stay right where you are. The fourth quarter is coming up next.
And we're getting underway here in the fourth quarter. The scoreboard tells the story in this matchup, but we'll see how much things change up here. The Kings trail by 21. We've got Rudy Gay, Lawson out there with Collison. Then it's Garrett Temple, and it's Tolliver in at the center, filling out the middle. So that's the five in the game for Sacramento. Temple gets the bucket. Love the assist right there. Excellent use of the bounce pass. And for Houston, they're shooting one of the high points for them in this game at 54%. Harden the pass to Anderson and finished off by Anderson. Oh, you like how hard it spots up his teammates perfectly. I mean, he just knows how to get them the ball in the right place. Lawson kicks to Collison. The NBA game more analyzed than ever before. The teams are competing against one another, but also, Chris, we're seeing the league is sharing a lot more information with fans. Analytics now becoming a very important part of it. Well, I, I think the, the one thing that you have to remember about analytics, though, is that uh, there isn't a, a consistent variable. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take into account uh, what a guy went through that day, the defender that's playing against him whether it's cold, whether it's warm. Uh, so I, I, I caution a little bit about analytics, but at the same time, uh, fans need as much information as possible. So I'm glad that the fans get as much information as they need uh, because then they can be as informed as they like to uh, so they can sit back and armchair quarterback like myself and, and kind of make decisions or second-guess decisions that are going on based on their knowledge of the game. So I, I think it's great uh, for teams, for fans, uh, for everyone uh, that you just have more information about the teams that you love. That's an excellent point. Odiunis against Gay. Wide open look. Another miss by Gay. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. Oh, even though he has been lost in the shuffle, his team remains in front. Collison, the open look. He trains the quick shot. Oh, Collison is so efficient. Someone who likes to catch the D by surprise by shooting off the pass. Harden dishes to Monte Yunus. Anderson outside. The tray. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Sacramento will take possession. Billy Cauley Stein. He's checked in for Ty Lawson. The Kings trail by 19. Collison inside. Here's Cauley Stein. The rebound by Anderson. Anderson's got seven rebounds in the game. Houston moving the ball around. Harden the pass to a reason. They get the rebound. Here's Monte Yunus. Expanding his range. And there's Ariza. That's good on the assist by Anderson. Nine points for Ariza. Man, they came out smoking here from beyond. Well, no one is Started. stepping up and making them beat them off the dribble. Until that happens, they'll continue to burn you from there. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. And throughout the years, one thing that the Kings, Chris, have done well as a franchise is put together an exciting team. And as you said that, that applies to good or bad. From the white chocolate days with my man Jay Will dazzling the fans to the Mitch Richmond teams, the Kings have always been fun to watch. Part of it is that the franchise has always seemed to prefer playing an up-tempo style of basketball. Regione kicks to Ariza. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. Ariza's got five points now this quarter. Wow, what a smart play. He recognized the height advantage and went straight to the rack. Gay right side. The 10-footer. He can't get that one to fall. The Rockets go the other way with it. Harden dishes to Prigioni. And it's Ariza in the corner. Bonianis kicks to Ariza. And again, it's the Rockets from deep. And with that three, his second of the half, he's equaled his total from before the break. Pass to Gay. Will it go? And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. Here's Harden. Prigioni, the pass to Harden. Misses off the right iron. Kings have gotten only three of their nine field goal attempts to go down since the end of the third. Pretty cold down the stretch. Collison kicks to Gay. 
Looking to get it going. Another miss by Gay. Hard to tell if he's just lacking energy in the second half, but it does not look like he's himself. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Well, Harden's ability to stretch the floor is crucial. You love to see him drop in those perimeter jumpers. Collison dishes to Gay. Caspi passes to Temple. From deep. And the rebound goes to the Rockets. And, and, you know, you can feel the desperation right now. They're starting to lose their composure offensively. Oh, man, this is when the coach gives you the whistle and needs to settle his guys down. Don't worry about the run. Go one possession at a time. He kicks to Collison. And it falls over the rim and in. Collison's got four this quarter. The mid-range area of the floor is so important, and Collison knows how to shoot from there. Harden kicks to Monte Unis. And it's Sacramento with the rebound. Kay's got his fourth rebound in this one. Collison with another miss. Houston's gotten three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth. And it's Ariza in the corner. Pass to Monte Unis. And it's going to be a three-second call. Chris, you and I were just talking about DeAndre Jordan and all that that happened to him a couple years ago at Dallas. He agreed to go to the Mavs, then changed his mind. The league ended up shortening the free agency moratorium from 10 days to five. Uh, do you like that change? You know what? Um, it depends on who you are in this situation. You know, having been a free agent before, I know... Uh, that you need a little bit of time to think or you might want to get away and, and and also you know you have to go visit cities so can you you know visit two or three cities and know. make your decision in those five days but then again it gives you a good deadline to have to do it so for me this is not something uh you know we have teams that break contracts all the time or we have teams that let guys go all the time i didn't feel that sorry for dallas in this situation uh so with me for me uh, I, I just felt that uh the league modified it and good for everyone uh, let's go and uh get the game started great points it's not winning basketball when you're attempting shots like that oh no you're right it's selfish on his part to attempt that should have passed it back out and tried to get a better look the pass to Onoaku. Harden dishes to hero lock at six back to Harden and Harden with the stuff oh you love seeing Harden take off of the slam he has just unreal hops kicks it to McLemore He dishes it to Casper. Barnes outside. The feed now to Collison. That doesn't go either for Collison. For Houston, they've gone 8 of 14 from the floor here in the fourth quarter. Harden up top, guarded by McLemore. The 10 footer. It's rebounded by LeBissier. Sacramento's gone ice cold from three point land 0 of 4 since the start of the final quarter. Shoots the three. Rebound by Harrell. Harrell's got rebound number 13 with that last one. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And turnover in the league. We're seeing it right now. A new commissioner, a new director of the Players Association. Chris, new owners. Do you like the way things are going in that regard? Uh, I do. Basketball is in great hands, and thanks to our past commissioner, and uh, I think that, you know, uh, we have great leadership, and uh, we're continuing in the way that we were going, and that's basketball for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I love watching the game expand and evolve and continue to grow. Well said. Chris, every year we see less and less of the classic 20 and 10 big men. You average 20 points and 10 rebounds for your career. Why do you think we are seeing less big men hit those benchmarks? Uh, you know what? I, I, I really uh, don't know. I can't even act like I do, Kevin. Uh, you know, that was a different time, and I, I look at these kids now, and I watch them play, and I'm in awe. And uh, I admire their skill sets. And so uh, I'm really not sure about that. But uh, my mom always used to tell me, stay focused on what you could do. So I'm glad I, I stayed focused on hitting them boards and trying to get our team to get some wins. Well said. The dish to Ennis. Let's it go from deep. Out of bounds. Sacramento will take possession. Sacramento's gotten some tough luck from three-point range. In the fourth quarter, they've hit just one of six from deep. Labissier, it's rebounded by Houston. 
Harrell's got 14, yep, 14 rebounds for him tonight. Wow. And Harrell slams it in. <laughs> he just bangs down the one-handed. Mm -hmm. Two very easy points right here. Okay, time now for an injury report. We've got a chance to check up on Rudy Gay's status. David? Hey, Kevin, I spoke with the head athletic trainer for the Kings. After taking a look, he informed me that it doesn't look too bad. That is such a tough blow to take at the early stage of this season. Hopefully, with it being early, we can recover and help this team down the road. Kevin? Well, thank you, David. Hopefully, we'll see him very soon. Now, Casper. Right wing. Here's Labissiere. Sacramento again missing. Down low. It's deflected. And now it's Lawson running. He can go all the way. He scores a six bucket from the floor with that one. He's shot the ball 11 times. And the defensive instincts of Caspi are a huge bonus for this team. He loves creating havoc and creating transition opportunities for his squad. And there's the call on Montrez Harrell. And that's his first foul. And for Sacramento, they're shooting a meager 37% for the game. And the foul on Tyler Ennis. That is his first foul of the game. Perhaps the most memorable team, Chris, you played on, the Kings of the early 2000s. We see a lot of teams now that have that same up-tempo style with great passing. Is this the way basketball is meant to be played? You know, I think so. I think, uh, you know, you have five players on the court, and, other, and unlike other sports, uh, you have to play offense and defense on this team. And so to keep guys motivated, to keep guys engaged, you know, you want guys that want to touch the ball and score. There could be guys that, that can be just decoys out there, but they're still touching the ball, being part of the offense. And it's no worse feeling than to come down for two, three, four, five, six possessions and not touch the ball. Uh, and as a fan, for me, it's nothing worse than watching the team come down two, three, four, five, six possessions and a guy try to go one on one and he really can't score. And you're looking at the coach like, get this guy off the floor. So team basketball is great. Why? Because uh, you get more open looks, uh, better shot selection. You get different guys in different positions. And, and I think most importantly, you don't think about this, you get more highlights because it makes the defense move uh, from side to side. It makes yes. the defense more engaged and pay attention. And therefore, when they slip up, uh, it's that much more special uh, with the play. And you can only do that mostly with five players that move the ball. So, yeah, team ball is definitely the best player but even on the best teams you need a guy that can go get you some buckets <laughs> like that Barnes kicks to Lawson dishes it to McLemore the shot will not fall so Houston will take it the other way Decker passes to Harrell Houston moving it around it's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so we will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. You came into the NBA, Chris. You hit the ground running, winning Rookie of the Year. I know it's a different story for every player, but how did you make the adjustment from college ball to NBA-level basketball? Uh, you, you know what? I love the adjustment. Uh, the game was faster. Uh, you had to be in better shape, but I had great teammates. My boy Spreewell, Billy Owens, Chris Mullen. Uh, you know, I had guys that showed me how to prepare before each game, guys that showed me uh, how to do rehabilitation, how to get in the cold, the hot tub. Uh, really good guys, guys that wanted me to succeed and so therefore you know what I wouldn't have been as successful if I didn't have those guys around so you know I thank my vets on that team well said Houston's gone beyond the arc seven times here in the fourth and been successful three times well guys this was never really a contest just a total obliteration if you will and you can safely say mission accomplished now for Houston and this was one that never really was in doubt I thought an all-around dominant performance and you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game yeah there was a sense of that and, and man they, they just pretty much blew them right out of the water a clinic was put on display here today and it'll advance their win total up to 12 on the season and against a conference opponent, always good to take that first win of the season series to establish a psychological edge. And when you look back at this one, what an amazing performance this was for Mana Yunus. Well, he was obviously feeling it at the offensive end tonight. It was his energy, his efficiency. That put them over the hump in this game. And as it goes out of bounds, he's been able to keep the ball here.
Seven seconds left to play in the final quarter. Here's McDaniels, and he banks in the layup. And they've just done a great job of keeping this crowd out of the game. And we're getting closer to victory. The crowd's getting quieter. Well, well, the fans have sounded lost and disappointed, which is exactly what they were hoping to accomplish. So we see Houston taking the W here. This crowd was stunned by the manner in which their team was dismantled. Yeah, you know what? Shocking. I don't care what the matchup is. You never expect a road team to come in and just cruise to the kind of win they did tonight. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much, James. Congrats on the win. Looked like you guys really had a lot of confidence and really had a lot of flow offensively. Yeah, we just had to move the ball and make the game easy tonight. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson, along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny Smith. Donatus Matayunas. Stellar play in the third quarter. He set the tone for how the rest of the game would go. They never really relinquished control after that. You talk about a dominant shooting performance. He had defenders draped all over him, and he never looked flustered, and he never looked confused, and his confidence was never shaken. The job he did down low was fantastic. That's right, fantastic. He had great understanding of the way the defense was set up in the paint. He had a ton of high percentage looks close to the bucket and converted every time. Nice game, real nice game. And that'll wrap things up. Thank you for joining us. For Shaquille O'Neal, for Kenny the Jet Smith, for Kevin Harlan, wherever he might be, and for the rest of the 2K Sports crew, the best in the business. This is Ernie Johnson. Good night, everybody.